was at the pet store the other day, a few weeks ago, actually. And um, while I was there, I was just kind of around the corner doing my own thing, looking up some stuff, looking for some things, you know, as you do in a pet store. And um, there was a, a, a lady in there who was working with her dog. Her dog was um, high strung, I would say, anxious looking. And she was talking to one of the employees at the store saying that, you know, she had been told to get her dog out to socialize more and that sort of thing. So she was really working hard on that, which all admirable, honestly. Uh, And then I hear the little ding of the door go and someone else comes in and I hear the lady that was actually at the cash register go, oh my gosh, your puppy looks so cute. And before I knew it, I heard the barking and the thing and the carrying on. There was a whole bunch of noise and then the puppy yelping and there was stuff amok, (laughs) just craziness ensuing. And of course, I can't help it. I'm like drawn to it like a kid in a candy store. That's a weird analogy. (laughs) I'm just drawn to it. The, The... I don't know what it is whenever I hear dogs barking or dog communication anyway, I'm just drawn to it. So of course I come around the corner to see tiny little puppy, really, really cute, now terrified, hiding behind its owner and the other dog with the lady that was working on socialization, trying desperately to get her dog to calm down. And both, this is what I thought was was interesting to me, both the owners of the puppy and the dog were both saying to their respective dogs, it's okay, you're okay, you're okay, it's okay, you're okay. And I sat there watching because it was starting to calm down. Honestly, if they were, if it was really going to become a struggle, I, you know, I would have, I would have superheroed my way into that. I can't help myself, but everybody was safe, but everyone kept on saying, it's okay, you're okay, it's okay, you're okay. And I, I kind of stepped back and looked at the situation and thought, nobody's okay. Why do we keep saying you're okay? None of that is true. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the phrase, it's okay, you're okay, why you should stop saying it, because I hear it all the time. So today, that's what we're going to talk about, um, what, why you should stop saying it's okay, and what you should be saying instead. We're going to talk about that today here on the podcast. Let's get into it. Are you worried that your fearful dog may hurt someone or something else? Do you have to prepare just to take a walk around the block? Hi, I'm Tracy, and I too had that dog, the one that you could only walk at nighttime when no one else was around. And I felt ashamed, and oh gosh, I wish that people could just see the dog that I know and love. I wanted the confidence to be able to walk my dog and not have to worry about who or what was around the corner. And I kept telling myself that if I just keep doing obedience drills and distracting with treats, that things would get better. Until I found the secret. Fear is not something that you can train out of a dog. In this podcast, you will find tips to help build your dog's confidence naturally, communication and understanding to foster that trust, and how to address those fear-based behaviors effectively so that you can enjoy a stress-free life with your dog. So if you're ready, stop chopping those chicken wieners, grab your notebook, and let's get to it. Hello, 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 and welcome. It is me, Tracy, here today. Oh, oh gosh, I'm so glad that you are here with me, my dog-loving friend. I I will say this is a topic, actually, I I have spoken about this before. And, um, and many people are sometimes shocked to, to hear why this is so important. And it is important. This isn't a frivolous thing we're talking about today. And I'm going to explain to you why it's so important. But before I do that, I just want to make sure that everybody knows and everybody is on that mailing list. Are you a pen pal? Are you and I pen pals yet, my friend? Are we pen pals? We should be pen pals. If we're not, please go over to beyondobedience.ca. Okay, beyondobedience.ca. You're going to wait on the page for a second. A little pop-up menu is going to come up. It's going to say, if you want to join the Canine Chronicles, you give me your name, give me your email, and that's it. We are pen pals. Why do you want to be pen pals with me? Well, well, 
First of all, it's one of the best ways to get a hold of me. If you have a question, if you're like, I'm not really sure about something, Tracy, can you help me out? Send me a note. Send me an email. But also, also, I am going to be giving out, you know, not give. Am I giving it out? I'm going to be letting people know about the new upcoming stuff that's happening. And there's some upcoming stuff that's happening. And you want to be the first to know. There is a new program coming out for fearful dog owners. I'm working on it. And I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I have been I have been behind the scenes. Like I'm loving this stuff and the work that I'm doing. And I'm really hoping that this is going to move the needle for people that have been struggling with fearful dogs or fear reactive dogs. So I'm really excited about that. And you'll be the first to know about that if we're pen pals. Also, also my other superpower, if you don't already know, is the multi-dog household. I am a ninja when it comes to understanding canine conversations and living with groups of dogs. And I am planning on Highlighting, no, not highlighting. Words fail me today. I am planning on test driving. Mm, that's a better word. Test driving. Test driving my new master class for the multi dog household. That's going to take a bit of time. My my fearful dog people, your, your stuff's coming first. But multi dog household people, just because I have been getting a ton of questions from people struggling with their multi dog households. And I really want to, um, I really want to create this. So those are the kind of things I'm just saying, those are the kind of things that I would let you know as my pen pal, you're going to know first, you're going to have firsthand to know about that. You can be a part of that for freezies for free, right? Because I want people's feedback. So there you go. All right. So do that now. Press pause. If you have to go to beyondobedience.ca, sign up for the canine chronicles so that were pen pals. So I never lose track of you. Okay. Let's talk about the situation that I was talking about earlier in the pet store. Okay. <laughs> the situation I was talking about earlier, the it's okay. You're okay. Situation where I, after the big scuffle and it was a, it wasn't nothing happened. Yes. The puppy yelped, but the puppy was being a puppy. The puppy, I don't, the dog never even touched the puppy. I think it just startled, scared the puppy. Uh, but when I walked around the corner to see both owners telling their dogs, it's okay, you're okay. Um, and the even the employees there were like, oh, it's okay. And everybody, everybody was saying, it's okay. Oh, you know, stuff like, did that scare you? Oh, it's okay. You're okay. That whole scenario, I sat back and watched it. And as I mentioned before, I was like, none of that was okay. Not a single thing that happened there. <laughs> none of it was okay. Not from the dog's perspective. Not from the dog's perspective. Certainly not from the puppy's perspective. The puppy was like, something came at me. It scared me. Um, the other dog that is dealing with like anxieties and when I remember I said the dog lean, seemed anxious at there, was not in a calm state of mind. And when the puppy came around... I don't know what the dog's intent was because as I say, I didn't see it. It might have just been something as simple as, oh, there's a puppy. I'd like to go see it. But what happened in that moment was just chaos and none of it was okay. So I think, I think you're okay. It's okay. is probably, <laughs> probably my least favorite phrase. And it's something we say all the time. And I'm going to break down why that is, and in particular for dogs, why it can be such a detrimental thing to say. And I'm not saying that to be dramatic. I'm actually saying that to be honest with you. When, um, when we use the phrase, it's okay, I've never seen, let me, let, me, let me back up a bit. I've never seen anybody say the phrase, it's okay, without softening their body language and their tone, Right? Whenever we're in that situation where something has startled our dogs or something has happened to our dogs or our dogs are expressing to us that they are uncomfortable in this moment, whenever I see somebody say, it's okay, you're okay, they immediately change their tone. See how I said it that way? It's okay, you're okay. Um, and we know, we know that our dogs do not understand the words that we're saying they are going to immediately, especially in a fearful stimulus, okay? Let's let's go back. 
bloop, 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 bloop. Let's back up a little bit. If you heard um, last week's post, yes, last week's episode where I talked about um, newly adopted dogs being um, in survival mode. When your dog has a fearful stimulus or in the case of the other dog, because I don't know if it had a fearful stimulus or if it was literally just over threshold and anxious. But when our dogs are in that state of mind, either a fearful stimulus or an over threshold, they're over anxious, they're over whatever, they are in survival mode. Okay, just like we talked about last week with the newly adopted dog, they're in survival mode. So when our dogs are in survival mode, especially when they are in acute survival mode, meaning something has happened. Oh, that's probably going to come up as really loud because I just clapped my hands right in front of the microphone. Especially when something has happened. Something has startled them, right? They, their brain snaps into what I call right brain. Okay, I've mentioned this before. I am going to do a series on the dog analogies and I'll discuss more, more um, of that then. But very simply, left brain is the thinking part of the dog's brain. Right brain is the instinctual part of the dog's brain. And I know anatomy wise, it's not that way. <laughs> okay, but I don't want to talk about amygdalas and all of that other stuff of the brain anatomy. So to make it simple, left brain, thinking side right brain, instinctual side. So when your dog has a fearful stimulus, especially an acute fearful stimulus, like this puppy had, the puppy came in, it was all like, oh my gosh, life is exciting, came around the corner and bam, dog there that came at it, right? That fearful stimulus is going to drive that puppy into that right right brain, right? That's, that's pure survival. Like, oh my gosh, this thing is going to eat me and end me. That's what it thinks. So when that happens, right, first of all, Dogs will struggle to access that left side of their brain where they access English as a second language. That's the first thing, right? They have a very hard time even hearing English as a second language, even hearing the words. Even if you had put a, a, a some sort of action to those words in the past, a dog that is in survival mode, the dog that is in their right brain, the dog that is not in their thinking brain, but in their instinctual brain is going to struggle to hear those words. So the words are essentially meaningless. Okay. Add on top of that, what they are going to pick up on is the tone. And they're going to pick up on your body language in that moment. So let's get into the mind. Let's start, let's start with the puppy. Let's get into the mind of the fearful dog, right? That puppy comes in. It's all like, oh my gosh, this is exciting. So many scents, so many things. What's going on? Goes around the corner. Bam, threat, threat that comes at me. And all the humans freak out, okay? The humans that are there, the, the woman holding the other dog would have immediately got startled and went to pull her dog back and was saying, calming her dog down or trying to pull her dog away. The employees were like, oh my gosh, you know, everybody was making noise. This little puppy is like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Right? It goes into survival mode. The one person that it trusts more than anything in this moment gets soft, shrinks down and says, you're okay. It's okay. You're okay. Now our humans, our human side of us is going, our human side of us, we are the <laughs> Most of us are human <laughs> that way, but the human in us knows that we're trying to be soothing, right? But a dog that is in instinctual survival mode will not see that as soothing. They just won't see it as soothing. They are going to look to go, who's going to protect me? Think of it like the mama bear in this moment, right? If, if your little puppy was with their mom, they would yelp and run behind their mom and the mom would stand up and be like, oh, hell no, right? That's what normally would happen. But we don't do that as humans. We, we get soft. We curl up. We say, it's okay. You're okay. We get very, very soft and quiet. Our body language changes and we become this like soft place to land. 
which might be fine later when our dogs are no longer feeling that threat. But in this moment, they don't need you to say it's okay. And here's the bottom line. It's not okay. In that moment, for that puppy and for that owner, they did not know it was okay. You did not know the intent of the other dog. Right? So you're lying. (laughs) You're lying. You don't know it's okay. And a lot of that comes from um, like from our societal norms, right? That will will, you know, not necessarily want to insult the other person. So we'll say things like, it's okay, you're okay, all of that stuff. But it doesn't actually come from a place of, did you actually think you're okay? You didn't know the intent of that dog. For all you know, that dog could have come around, picked up your little puppy and shook it. You didn't know. So you don't even know if it's okay, right? You have no idea. You're just making assumptions. Oops, hold on a second clicking things and I didn't mean to. Um, so that's the first thing. One, you're not, you're probably not being truthful because you don't in your heart and heart believe that, that, that they're okay. And two, the puppy wasn't okay. Nothing about that was okay. Nothing about that interaction was okay. So you're not even telling the truth. Okay. Now let's look at it from the other dog's perspective. Okay. Um, for the other dog, as I mentioned, and this is just my very brief assessment of, you know, walking into the store and seeing this woman with her dog and hearing her story because she was talking to the employee um, that she had just been told to go out and socialize the dog. Probably the worst, worst advice you can get, honestly, because what is socialization? But anyway, I digress. So there she is thinking that she's doing all the right stuff, but her dog is clearly anxious. The dog is clearly displaying signs of being uncomfortable. It couldn't sit still. It was constantly scanning. Like it was constantly like scanning around looking. And I don't know because I didn't really get to know the dog that well. Was it scanning just looking for threat levels itself? Probably more likely than not looking for threat levels itself because it was uncomfortable. And two, um, the owner was uncomfortable. She was... um, she was trying to do something, but I don't think whoever it was that told her this advice had actually given her good, solid, like, this is how I want you to do it, <laughs> right? She was just like, I'm just in pet value. So from that dog's perspective, her owner was unsure, unconfident. Um, the dog was agitated, um, scanning, frantic. And in a moment, another dog person came into the building and again I didn't see exactly what the intent was but that dog's reaction was oh my gosh whether or not it was excitement because it was a puppy or whether or not it was like oh my gosh get away from me because I'm freaking out here and I don't want anybody around me I don't know what it was but the bottom line was the owner was startled she ended up yanking the dog back on the collar probably creating some oppositional sort of drive there, right? All sorts of anxiety ridden stuff. And her owner also say, it's okay, you're okay. Now she was saying it frantically. Like she was like, it's okay, you're okay, you're okay. Like she was freaking out. She wasn't saying it in the soothing thing, but let's go back to the tone and what's happening there. You have a highly anxious dog that is now reacting, responding to a situation and the driving force behind it, the person that she... Uh, I don't know if this dog was male or female, to be honest with you, but the person that that dog loves and trusts more than anything is also now anxious and frantic and yelling words that mean nothing to the dog. Okay. (laughs) So you can see how for both circumstances, that phrase, you're okay, it's okay, it's okay, is not going to help either one of the dogs. And because again, Left brain, right brain, when dogs go into right brain, when they go into that instinctual brain, they're not going to hear the words. Even if you did, I guarantee you nobody's put a, no one's actually put a, a meaning to it's okay to these dogs. But even if you did, let's say you were someone who was at home doing comforting or um, conditioned relaxation stuff with your dog and using the phrase it's okay. I guarantee you a dog in this moment would not be able to hear those words. They just won't hear them. Okay. So you're saying things. It means nothing to the dog. 
And you're getting, you know, in the one case, she was getting softer and quieter, trying to soothe the other dog when that's not what they needed. In this case, the owner was getting just as frantic as the dog was. That was, I don't know, I'm going to assume it lunged. I didn't see it. I'm going to assume it like went towards the puppy because the puppy yelped and all of that stuff. Anyway, I'm making some assumptions here, but let me just tell you, I've seen it a thousand times. So it's a educated guess at what happened. Okay. So that's how the dogs see it from their perspective. So energetically, the woman trying to soothe the puppy isn't soothing the puppy at all, right? They're just, they're just softening themselves. And from a dog that thinks that they are in danger, they're going to look at their human and go, oh my gosh, you're in danger too. Like now we're both in danger. That's how that vibe goes. And for the other owner who was frantically saying it's okay, um, she her anxious energy was just feeding into the anxiety that the dog already had. And so now you have more anxiety and nobody there is doing anything that is soothing or helping the situation whatsoever. So what should you do? What should you do? I'm so glad you asked. And I'm going to tell this story like a true Gen Xer. <laughs> I'm going to tell this story like a true Gen Xer. Hello to my fellow Gen Xers out there. Listen, when I was a kid, when I was a kid as a Gen Xer, sit down as I tell you the tale of what it was like growing up in Gen X. Uh, when I was a kid, and let's just say we were trying something new, you know, like uh, bike riding. You're riding a bike, you know, and your training wheels have just come off. You're a little kid. You're dad takes your training wheels off you start going you're getting it you hit a rock you fall you fall down and you start to your lip starts to quiver a little bit you're looking at your dad and you're like oh because you're embarrassed you fell you don't know what hurt maybe I broke something your skin's your knee whatever what as a fellow Gen Xer say it out loud if you're listening to this what would your dad say to you as a Gen X kid because if you were me, you were little four-year-old me riding her new bike, your dad would say, what happened? Ah, you're fine. Get up and get on the bike again. You're fine. That's what we heard all the time. Are you bleeding? And even if you said yes, he'd be like, ah, you're fine. Just keep riding your bike. That was, <laughs> you're fine. I remember my dad was also my baseball coach. And um, this is true Gen X time. If I wasn't paying attention, he'd throw a ball at my head. And if it hit me, all he would say is, ah, you're fine. Pay attention. <laughs> that's what he said. Um, and that's how we grew up. You're fine. You're fine. Right? And the funny thing about it is, is that although it wasn't very soothing at the time, and he certainly didn't grow up in an era where we were coddled, um, when... Our family, whenever our family had any problem whatsoever, um, my dad was the you're fine. And if my dad said we were fine, I knew that we were fine. Right? Like, and we went through some hard times in the 80s during the recession and all that stuff. But if my dad said you're fine or we're fine, I felt fine. I felt fine. I don't know what it is, but that's, that's now the thing that I say to my dogs. I've worked with a lot of fearful dogs and I had to learn to train myself to stop saying it's okay. Because again, no matter how I said it, it always came out sappy. It always came out like, oh, you're okay. And I make this face, like, I wish you could see this. <laughs> Eventually this will also be on YouTube, but I make this face where I go, mm, like, make a squish at my face, like, oh, you're okay, like, really squishy, and I, and my shoulders come up, and my head kind of tilts, and I'm, oh, you're okay, um, and so I really had to embrace my inner dad <laughs> when working with fearful dogs, and I make sure, first and foremost, that if I say you're fine, I actually believe it, okay, that's the first tip, you're fine, because I got this right? You're fine. I got this. And for that puppy in that instance, what I would have done is as that puppy got startled and went behind me, I would have taken a step towards that dog, kept my puppy behind me, 
who had made eye contact with that dog that said, you shall not pass, giving the clear communication not only to that dog but to my puppy that you are fine and I literally have your back and I would wait until the dog settled down or took a step back before I even turned back towards my puppy before I even thought about cuddling my puppy or picking my puppy up or any of that stuff I would make sure that you are in fact fine before I say you're fine okay so that's the big outstanding difference I want you to substitute you're okay it's okay with you're fine but don't lie don't lie if it is not fine yet don't say anything you assess the situation you put the puppy behind you do whatever you need to do to make sure that it is fine before you say it's fine okay now let's switch roles a little bit and go into the other woman who was there now first and foremost um if i had been working with this lady i would be like your dog's over threshold already this is way too much stimulus let's start smaller if we're talking about socializing your dog however that's not what happened because i'm not her trainer so (laughs) uh in that moment i would have actually I'm, I'm, I'm giving you like the full let, let's 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 walk through this here's what I would have done I'm just thinking out loud now here's what I would have done because that dog was moving forward towards a puppy and that puppy is no threat I would have then not just pulled the dog back sometimes you have to pull the dog a little bit back because you need to get in front of them I would have stepped in front of that dog turned my back on the puppy and the other owner and I would have asked my dog to step backwards out of the situation that conversation does a couple of things this is good stuff you guys (laughs) i never mean to go this long and give out all this information but once i start i just can't stop so here we are we're doing this take notes (laughs) so because um because i would quickly assess that that quote unquote threat or whatever that is coming towards my dog that my dog reacted to was in fact just a puppy i'm going to turn my back on that puppy because that puppy is not a threat by turning my back on that puppy and stepping towards my dog right asking that dog to disengage or to step out of this conversation that it's currently having or freak out whatever you want to call it I'm saying to my dog that is nothing to me that isn't even a threat that's a puppy right we don't even need to have that kind of shenanigans because that's a puppy And I'm going to stand in between that two. And then I'm going to ask the dog. I'm going to wait till the dog actually has that eye contact with me. I'm going to take a big old deep breath like. And then I'm going to look at the dog and go, you're fine. In that tone, like you're fine. (laughs) Right. And that you're fine means you need to knock that off. (laughs) Right. What you're doing right there. Let's not do that because you're making me look silly in front of a puppy. Right. That kind of thing. So that's how I would handle those two situations. But either way, I would be sending clear cut signals on to my dogs about the situation. And I never lie to my dogs. I never tell my dogs you're okay or you're fine if I don't truly believe that they are fine. I never lie. Okay, because you can't fake it. That's the thing. You can't fake it. All right. Oh my gosh. That was a lot. That was a lot, you guys. I was literally, this episode was just supposed to be here. Stop saying it's okay and say you're fine instead. Instead, I gave you the whole like what I would do in each case. But um, that is what I would do in each case, right? For the puppy, for the puppy, I would put the puppy behind me and step towards the other dog showing the puppy that I got this I'm not going to turn my back on that dog because I don't know if it's a threat or not I don't know so I'm going to wait and find out the other dog I would turn my back on a puppy because it's a puppy (laughs) it's not a threat at all it's a puppy now even if because some people might come at me and say well what if the dog was just being excited and wanted to go see the puppy which I get all the time even if that is the case you don't go see a puppy like that. 
We don't rush into a puppy's face. You scared the poop out of a puppy. Don't do that. That's rude. We don't do that. So even if that was the case, even if the dog had no ill intent, was just like, oh my God, there's a puppy and I want to go see it. No, we don't do that. We don't do that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Listen, I gave you way more than I thought I was going to give you, but I'm going to leave it because you're okay. <laughs> you're okay with learning this information. But I'm going to put this out here. I don't normally talk about this. I'm going to put this out there. If you are someone that likes this kind of stuff, that likes to get into the nitty gritty of this kind of stuff, I do talk a lot about this in my premium program, Relationship Remedy. And if you are like, mm, this is this is for me, you might want to look into that. Uh, it is currently, you know what, if you're interested, you can message me and ask me more about it. How about that? If you're interested, we're pen pals, I'm sure by now, because you've done that. So if you're interested in learning more about learning about that kind of thing, when to turn my back, when not to turn my back, right? All of that kind of stuff, you can hit me up in the pen pals in the pen pal section. And that's what we do. All right. So there you have it. Stop saying you're okay. It's okay. Say you're fine. <laughs> Make sure you don't lie. Make sure that you are expressing in clear, crystal clear body language to your dog what is going on. And you will find that the bond of trust will build to, uh, to help you in everything else that you do. Everything else that you do. All right, I hope that helps. Okay, here's what I need you to do for me though, my pen pal friend, my pen pal friend. I know we're pen pals now. Here's what I need you to do. If you liked this episode, could you please share it? Share it with other people. Let them know that that we're out there. Sharing the episode really does help me meet, reach more dog lovers like you, more people interested in this kind of stuff. As well as if you haven't already and you're on Apple, please leave me a five-star written review on Apple. That also helps push the show out to more and more people. And it lets me know that this is the kind of stuff that you're interested in. And if you have an idea for an episode or have a question you'd like me to ask, just hit me up on that, on that email. Email me. Let me know and we will do that. As always, get out there today and be the person that your dog thinks you are. Because your dog thinks that you are amazing. And so do I. Have a great week, everybody. And we'll talk to you all next week. Bye for now. Oh, and one more thing. As always, this podcast is meant for education and entertainment purposes only and should never replace professional hands-on training if you are dealing with severe behavior issues with your dog. Always consult a trained professional in your area. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.